Now, for the fourth part of our talk, we're going to talk about the benefits, the risks, and the alternatives to these procedures as a family, uh, and, and somewhat individually as well. Some of this is left for the one-on-one uh, -on -one consultation. Talking about the benefits, the risks, and the alternatives of any intervention that you do, whether it's a new medication with your doctor, whether it's simply putting in an IV to have a CAT scan, should be something that you think about. But specifically for surgery, we're particularly um, fastidious in going over these things one by one. Uh, medical issues are often very individual. People talk to me about, well, what about my plavix or my stents or my hernia? And some of that we have to get to in the one-on-one -on -one consultation. Um, decisions in terms of just risk uh, that people are willing to take for their goals are very individual. And it is perfectly understandable that you might want to take uh, a lot of extra time to make those decisions please feel free to do that with us rather than feeling like you have to make up your mind and then come in and say, well, I've made this decision. We're here to help you in that process. Most importantly, the durability of these procedures is really well proven in the literature. We all know of a few people, usually third hand by report, where somebody will say, oh, they had a procedure and they gained their weight back. I, I want to caution against those sorts of um, storytelling uh, it is very uncommon for people to gain all of their weight back after a procedure. Certainly I have had patients who've had their lap band removed or had their fluid out and again we sort of turn the procedure off and they can gain their weight back. It's very uncommon for somebody with a gastric bypass to gain all their weight back. I have seen people go from 400 pounds to 200 pounds and then back up to 250 and yes they're not skinny at 250 but they have not regained all their weight. Certainly uh, there are things we can do to help people from regaining more, and most people don't uh, regain more than, than 20 or 30 pounds, but it's not uncommon uh, for people not to stay at their very lowest weight. And the literature shows that uh, even up to 10 years, uh, that most people keep most of the weight that they've lost off. And I want to be careful on this slide to point out that pe most people do not lose all of their excess weight. They lose between 55 and 67 percent of their excess weight. Now, most people don't want to be at their, quote, normal weight or their ideal body weight anyhow because it's really a little too skinny for most people. But um, we're not in the business, and I say this all the time, we're not in the business of making people skinny. We are in the business of trying to help people regain their health. And this degree of weight loss really is just fine for most people to have most health benefit. The effect on type 2 diabetes is particularly compelling uh, the Swedish Obesity Subjects um, study up here uh, done in Sweden was done with one of those older operations I was talking about in a previous segment that would occasionally break down and occasionally have to be reversed. So 46% resolved. Uh, they still had very good results. With gastric, most, of these other, most of these other studies um, have mostly gastric bypass, although um, Dr. Dixon's study um, is mostly um, lap band, 64%. Still very good numbers with a lap band. It's still a very compelling operation. Uh, so please don't feel like a lap band is not a good diabetes operation. It's a very good diabetes operation. So I think uh, when your doctor or your loved one says, oh, I'm concerned about the risk of your operation, you can say, look at this. Look at the benefit. What do you have for me that will has even a 10% chance of putting my diabetes into remission. And they'll look at you and say, what are you talking about remission? They can't put anybody into remission for the most part without surgical intervention. So these really are, there's nothing like this. And, and it is uh, perfectly acceptable to come and find out more and read the papers yourself. But they, we have no tool that works this well. My early, one of my early talks was uh, entitled you should have a pill this good. I was talking to primary care docs, and if they had a pill this good, I guarantee you they would give that pill to every diabetic. And in fact, even if it had the same risks as weight loss surgery has, uh, 1 in 300 death, they accept a 1 in 300 death rate for many different types of uh, interventions uh, or even, even pills if you take it over a 20 to 30 year period uh, quite happily. So. So in terms of if this was a pill, I guarantee you we wouldn't 
have to uh, have nearly so long a talk. Uh, so in terms of other obesity related medical problem outcomes, uh, this is just a, a sample slide. There are journals full of these improvements. Um, you see the diabetes. These, this is a review of a, a bunch of different articles uh, put together since 2006 that all have more than 10 patients in them and all studied, I believe, over a year, more than, longer than a year. Um, now, I want to be clear, not everybody has resolution of disease. Not everybody even has improvement, especially high blood pressure. Uh, we know that there's a, a fairly high number of even skinny people who have blood pressure problems as they age. 88% uh, is a wonderful uh, improvement rate, but that still leaves 12% of people with no improvement or little improvement. Uh, so that's not everybody. Um, the same thing goes especially for arthritis uh, and joint pain. Resolution is a pretty high bar to clear. Most patients have improvement though. Um, and as with sleep apnea as well, look at the 91% number means that many people do have to have uh, a, a sleep study later and need to uh, um, stay on their CPAP mask. In terms of obstetrical data, um, we see infertility improve. We know that our in vitro fertilization uh, associates uh, will not do IVF quite often in anyone over a BMI of 35, uh, and certainly almost never in somebody with a body mass index of over 45. Um, we see that our previous cautiousness about the risk of bariatric surgery in pregnancy was um, probably overcautious. Many people who have bariatric surgery are older and they definitely have a higher risk uh, in their late 30s and 40s of having um, problematic pregnancies, um, especially Down syndrome or spina bifida. And that risk is there with an older mom. Uh, but for the most part, for most women, their pregnancy risk overall is actually safer. There are reduced risks during pregnancy, there are reduced risks during delivery, there are reduced risks for the fetus. Uh, when a fetus is growing in a mom who's suffering from obesity, that child has a much higher risk of having obesity and diabetes themselves uh, than a mom who has had surgery and lost her weight before she became pregnant. Uh, some very compelling literature on this as well. Um, in terms of um, benefits, life expectancy goes up when people have weight loss surgery and uh, the youngest patients and the heaviest patients are the ones with the most benefit because they probably are the ones who had the most at risk to begin with. And we'll see the opposite version of this slide later. I'm not sure this is readable on the internet to, uh, or on the camera here exactly, um, but uh, I'll, I, these slides will be up as well um, so you can look at them directly.